poultry farming is a very lucrative way of making money here in nigeria so on today's episode of the small business series we are going to spend the day with a poultry farmer who specializes in rearing only turkey we are going to listen to his stories spend the day with him and learn the ins and outs of having a turkey farm here in nigeria i am danica kosi but i love it when you call me Uma girl because i am a baby girl <laughs> so let us be friends on all social media platforms i am danica kosi everywhere my name is Adetola olalua emmanuel i'm a native of ibadan i'm a farmer i started this business right inside my room with thirty thousand. i couldn't afford to construct a pen so i bought a carton i was sleeping in the room and then i have the birds inside the same room as well inside the carton inside the carton wow that's an interesting story we are here at alama poultry farms and we are going to spend the day with them because we want to you know get to know the ins and outs of having a poultry farm like this so let me introduce you to the owner of this beautiful beautiful farm okay so you guys this is the owner of alama farm can you introduce yourself my name is Adetola Olalua Emmanuel. So I'm a native of Ibadan and okay. I'm a farmer. I'm happy to be a farmer as well. Okay, so this is your farm, right? Yes. What, what do you train? Is it a turkey farm? Is it just turkeys? Or? This is a turkey farm. It's mainly turkey. All right. What about you? Don't do any other thing apart from You don't from do any other thing apart from turkey. Oh, wow. So why did you decide to grow uh, only turkeys? I decided to go into only turkey because the market is readily available. Okay. So I don't need to look for customers. Customers do look for me. Wow. So is it more? Is it like it's more lucrative than? Um, it's more lucrative than broiler farming and other stuffs. Wow. I never knew. Like you guys, I never knew that. So how far long have you been doing this? I've been into this for eleven years. Eleven whole years, you guys. Like that means you're going to share a lot of information, like with us. You mind? Of course. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, for someone that wants to start up this business, how much do you think the person can start up with? The person can start up with as low as two hundred and fifty thousand naira. Two hundred and fifty thousand naira for just fifty birds. Fifty birds. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because okay. everything in Nigeria is now capital intensive. I'm telling you honestly, like guys, things are so I expensive. started with 30,000. You started with 30,000 30, naira? Yes. Wow. And I couldn't exhaust the whole 30,000 then. Wow. Because as at that time, the wood was 250 naira. Per one? Per one. Now wow. it's 2,000 naira. can imagine that. So, how many um, tokens did you start with? I started with 50 and all survived. No more. All thousand. survived? Wow, like you guys. That is so that that is massive like all of them survived yes. wow that's very great so what can you tell us like what what was the secret because i know that i've filmed a video with some um poultry farmers and they usually complain of um, mortality and all so what did you do about turkey farming once you start the the business it will entice you okay at least you won't face much challenges because if you are using a new place there's nothing like infection okay. but at the time you are increasing your stock, you start having challenges. Okay. So that's it. Someone that wants to go into turkey farming, like, what um, do you think the person can do differently? Like, someone that wants to start now in 2024, what do you think the person can do, you know, that will help the person um, maximize his or her profits? If someone wants to go into turkey farming now, yeah. there must be a place whereby you will keep them. Okay. That's the number one thing. Okay. And then you don't need a very big place before you can start turkey farming. Okay. I started this business right inside my room. Wow. So in I your have room? In, right inside my room because we don't have space then. Yeah. I couldn't afford to construct a pen. So I bought a carton. And then I was sleeping in the room. And then I have the boards inside the same room as well. Inside the carton? Inside the carton. Wow, that's an interesting story. Please, can you just tell us the whole story? I want to hear. <laughs> so, from there, I started with 50. And okay. then, once they are out of the brother, I transfer them into this room. Okay. And then, customers, whenever they come, they buy them inside that room. They come into the sitting room to buy inside the room. And with time, I started expanding. And then, I constructed this pen. So, wherever I want to start talking farming, Number one thing is where the person will keep them. Okay. He, will, he or she will need to buy drinkers, feeders, mm -hmm. and then 
drugs and vaccine as well. Okay, all right, all right. Like you said something about vaccine, like you have to vaccinate them. They must be well vaccinated. Lasota and Gomboro, the Gomboro vaccine. Lasota is for Newcastle too. Okay. And then Gomboro is for Gomboro infection. So, okay, so um, is there a particular time for the vaccine? One day old, two day old, or something, I don't know, two days uh, old The vaccination program starts by day seven. Okay. We start with Lasota. Okay. When they are 10 days, we, we give them Gomboro. And then when they are three weeks, we repeat the Lasota again. Okay, okay. So, I'm um, seeing a lot of... Um, I don't know, what do you call this? Like Turkey. the one at this size, this size, this particular size. These ones, uh, there will be three weeks on Wednesday. Okay, just three weeks. So I'm seeing yes. a lot of three weeks old here. Is it that you don't like, like grow them to they are mature enough to be, you know, to... No, we don't sell them at the mature, we don't grow them up to, up to maturity. Oh, wow. We sell them off when, once they are four weeks. Okay, so if I want to buy turkey for my fam myself or my family, I cannot come here. You I can. But you said you don't brew them too, right? And we will set them up at four weeks and then you train them up to maturity at okay. your place. Okay, no, no, what I mean is like, let's say I, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a visitor, some visitors, you know, in my house and I, I'm in need of a turkey right now, so can I just run down to Olama Farms and get one for myself and slaughter? No, we and don't own? have such a... Okay, so I have to come and buy then go and train them, train them at your at own home. place yes oh wow so why do you sell them off at um a tender age like is it that it is more profitable this way or something uh, we sell them off at four five weeks okay. because they consume less feed as at that time so okay. they don't consume much it's when they get to six weeks upward that they consume more food so you have to maximize profits by selling them off at four weeks Oh, and wow. then the market is readily available, available at that well. stage. So how many beds do you have here currently? Currently we have over 1,005 here. 1,500? We stock wow. 500 every week. Oh wow. So if the whole farm is fully stored, we used to have 2,005. We buy at day old. Day old, right? We buy turkey pouts. We call them okay. pouts. Okay. So we buy pouts, that's day old, and then we sell them off at four weeks. Four, five four. weeks. As someone that has been into the business for like up to 11 years, what do you do differently to prevent your beds from dying? Or the first the thing rate? is good hygiene. The bedding must always be clean and neat. Okay. So once the bedding is neat and clean, infection will be far away from them. There will okay. be no buildup of ammonia okay. inside the pen. Okay. And number two thing, they must be duly vaccinated. Okay. La Sota, Gomboro right. and Far Post vaccine. Okay. Those are the three vaccines we make use of. All so right. once they are fully vaccinated and then the bedding is okay, infection will be far away unless it will be a viral infection, infection. whereby all farmers within the whole neighborhood or mostly maybe the infection is coming for only Turkey. Okay. So all farmers rearing Turkey, they will be experiencing such at the same time. So please, can you just show us around your farm? At least let's see, like, can, right. we don't need to go in, so. Okay. Okay, still have, okay. This is our brooding room. What, how, what, what goes on here? Like, what do you do here? Once we bring them from the hatchery, okay. we put them here. We make them, them warm, warm right? okay, okay. for the first seven, for the first six days. All right. So after six days, we move them from this place because of space. Okay. Because they love flying about. Oh, wow. So this place won't be able to contain them. Wow. Because they still need more space for them to grow. Then okay. from here, we take them, we shift them into another place. Another place. Another bigger place. Can you still show us there? Still have some beds here as well. Yes. Okay. So these ones are three weeks. And then three weeks this old. cage is very good for beginners. Wow. If they can spend money on it because they don't need to clean anything. Okay. And okay. then the droppings will be going on the floor directly. Up on the floor directly. So wow. you can see that they are very neat and then they are healthy and hygiene. Infection, coccidiosis and other things will be far away from them. Oh wow. So it's better to keep them inside cage even than on the floor. Okay, okay. All right. 
What about this one? You didn't show us this one. <laughs> Just tell us. We don't need to go in. This one still, they are three weeks. Okay, this one and the other one. Yeah, are they are the same page. Three oh, weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. We brought them at the same time. So they are three weeks. All right. And then we still have some inside. All right. So this is the second stage of the of the brooding process. Okay. So once they are up to six days, we move them to this place because this place is bigger than the brooding room. Okay. So this pot here, we are not about this pot. Oh, okay, the pot. The, the clay pot here is being used to heat them up. All right. So we put charcoal inside. Inside so the clay pot. Inside the clay pot. So it generates the heat for them. Oh, wow. So the reason why we heat them is for them not to pile up. Because the number one challenge in turkey farming is stampeding. Okay. Once the heat is not enough, okay. they, will, they will all go to one side to generate it by themselves. Okay, because Sit they are feeling cold, right? Because of cold. Okay. So once the place is well heated, they will spread and then they will, they, they will eat, drink, and then on their convenience. Okay. And then if the heat is not enough, they will go to one, one side and then pile up and then they stamp, stamp, stampede. Wow. And then if the heat is excessive too, they'll be running around, running around. And then if they are not rescued, they can all die at wow. a time. Wow. So That's if the heat is too much. If the heat is too much. So how do you know when the heat is not much and when it is enough? Uh, through their reaction. Okay. They'll be the one to tell me what to do. The, okay. the birds, they are my master. Wow. I don't know anything. So it's from their reaction that I will know what to do. Because I've been conversant with them for the past 11 years. So wow. I don't even go to, to, to vet doctors or to any other place to, to go for post wow. I don't do any tests. I don't run tests. Wow. So based on their pool and then their reaction, I know what to give them. Oh, that means you monitor them like closely, like very well, uh, steady, like like these ones. Yeah, them. I do come over to check them every 20, 20 minutes. Every twenty minutes. Yes, because wow. there are some because they are very fragile at this stage. Some may some may be, some may go down, and then they they won't be able to stand up on their feet again. So I have to help them. Wow. So if you do not help them like that. They can die through that process because of the stress they are going through and then they're struggling to stand up by themselves. Wow. So do you also check them up at midnight or something? <laughs> no, I don't stay here. Oh, wow, wow. So once I know the quantity of charcoal to put. Okay. And another thing, there must be lightning. Okay. If there is lightning, they will spread. Oh, wow. Once we up this light now, they will come to one side. Wow. And then through that process, they will stampede. But once there is lightning and then the heat is normal, wow. they will spread till the following morning. So how old are these ones right here? These ones will be two weeks on Wednesday. Okay, they'll be two weeks on Wednesday. Yes. And after two weeks, when they are three weeks old, you move them out? When they are three weeks, move them inside the pen. Oh. Okay. Because as at that time, they will need hair. Wow. So how many beds do you have here currently? These ones they are more than 500, they are, they are 550. They are just like human beings too. Okay. We have varieties of human beings. We have the blind, okay. we have the lame. All right. So we have blind ones among them. We have lame ones among them. Wow. Like this one is yeah, an handicap. Wow. Right from the hatchery. Wow. It has deformed legs. Wow. So there are some, maybe they don't have they may have just only hand high. Some may have, some may not even have two highs. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> I've not seen that before. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, but that one is not common. It's Maybe not common, one right? in a thousand. But you've seen it. You've of seen course. It. Wow. I've even trained one. It doesn't have any high. Any high at all? At all. And then I trained it up to maturity. I trained mm -hmm. it for a year. For one year? Yes. Yeah. Once it's here, the others hit me. It will trace the, the okay, feed, the feeder. Wow. And then it can easily locate where to drink water. See, wow. so I have to permanent the bird in a cage 
so it's nowhere to get the water and then where to get the feed. They, they are just like human beings, they are very sensible. Talking, they are very selective. Okay. If you don't give them the right proportion of feed, yeah. it can wipe them off within a week. Wow. All these ones like this, if they are not giving the right feed, okay. they will just be dying one after the other, one after the other. By the time you know it, you will be packing them in tens, fifties, hundred, if you don't know what to do. Okay. So the, uh, the number one challenge in turkey farming is feed. Okay. Because based on the feed they are producing here in Nigeria, okay. there is no body regulating the, the feed. They just produce anything. Wow. Presently, I have a hundred bags of feed inside. The feeds are not good. Wow. And that's over 1.5 million. I bought the feed with the feed. I bought one the feed with over 1.5 million. Are you serious? And wow. then all the feed are not good. Are you saying that the feed must not be much? It must not be too much. It must not be small. It's not about the the feed. It's about the content. Okay, the content, the quality. The right? quality of the okay. feed. Okay. The ingredients being used. Some feed they make use of GNC, granite okay. cake. Okay. Turkey doesn't eat GNC. Wow. As small as they are like this, they can't feed on GNC, they can't feed on PKC. Okay. Once it's inclusive in, in their feed, it will kill them. Apart from um, the feeding and all, so what are other challenges associated with um, turkey farming? There are lots of challenges in turkey farming. Yeah. So it's not limited to one part. Challenge can come at any time. Okay. Turkey farming, it doesn't have a calendar that you are following this day one, you are giving it this, this drug day one, day two, are day you three. Wow. You can't do that for Turkey. It is what you are battling with that you must treat. There's okay. no calendar for them. If you bring a batch next to this week, you have the same feed. You are feeding them with the same feed. You bring another batch next week, you still face another challenge. Apart from the one you face with the first batch, even having used the same type of feed for them. So challenges in turkey farming is not limited. Most people, they don't, they don't create time to study the, the animals, the birds. Wow. Once you study them very well, you'll be able to know what to do at the right time. Okay. I'm here today just because of serious challenges are faced. There was a time whereby there was a viral infection. Oh. In each room, I do pack 100 birds wow. every morning. Wow. It was very challenging. So and like 100 turkeys? Like 100 in a single room. Wow. Then I was having maybe 1,005. I lost like 1,000. Wow. Even though I tried all my best, but the infection wow. was so severe. Even they don't die during the day like this. It night. is overnight that they die. Turkey farming is a very lucrative one. Well, if you invest 200,000, after selling, you will get 400,000. So wow. it's just like you are doubling your doubling money. Your, your, your investment. Your investment. Wow. And wow. then you make your return in a very few, in few weeks. Within four weeks, you've maximized your profit. You've known what you, what you are getting. Within four weeks? Day. Within four weeks. Are you serious? Yes. Of investing, like, okay, that means like if you are selling them off at... Four weeks. Okay, that's why you are doing that, because yes. you feel it is better. You, the I can't over, wait oh. till six okay, months six without getting months. anything. But within four weeks, at least you are doing something. You want to maximize your profit and you cannot wait and all, so you can just sell it off at four weeks. Yes. Or at a tender age. Yes. Then get your money back, then buy again. Invest again. Oh, wow, that's very great. Do you run the business alone or you have people that work with you? Uh, I have workers and then my wife is also helpful as well. Wow. So she do come around <laughs> to help me. People with high blood pressure, they okay. shouldn't go near poultry farming or poultry wow. business. Okay. Because anything can happen at, at any, any time. time. Wow. You may leave the farm this evening and then your birds are healthy. You may come tomorrow, tomorrow morning, morning, all of them are down. Wow. So if you can, just don't go into turkey farming. Wow. And then if you are stingy, because there are some drugs they sell at cheaper rates, maybe 500. And then there are some drugs that they sell at date of maybe 7,005. Okay. And then they have the same constituents. Okay. 
and then this one is 500 and then this one is 7,005. Most yeah. people will say uh, since they have the same constituents, they, yes, they can the do the same one. work. So they go for the cheaper one <laughs> oh, and then wow. at the end of the day, they lose their investment. A wow. drug of 10,000 Naira can save a million for you. So are you open for partnership? Let's say someone watching these videos, video wants to partner with you, are you open for that? Uh, we are not for partnership. Oh wow! Because okay. there are a lot of challenges. Let's assume yeah. we, you and I, we, we are into partnership in this business now. And then we run at loss. Yeah. You won't want to bear the loss. Bear the loss. So all the faults will be on me. What about um, training, are you open like consultation and all? Like people watching this video, can they call in and all? Of are course. The training can be done online and then the person can still come to the farm for training. For training, wow. But it's, it's not free of charge because okay. if it's free of charge, people won't, they won't value it. Yeah, so I, I charge <laughs> at least 50,000 for training because it's a lifetime investment. Who um, supplies to only people around? Because you guys, I'm filming this video from Ibado, Oyo State, Nigeria, okay? For those of you watching from Ghana and Kenya, different parts of the world. So I'm filming from Ibado, Oyo State, Nigeria. So I want to know, do you supply to people outside? Hey, we have customers that do come to the farm to pack them and then they resell. Okay. Most people that do buy from me, they are resellers. Okay. So they buy and then they sell. You have customers in Lokoja, you have in Abuja, you have in Ninja, you have in Potakot, we have in Kuma here. Okay. And then we have customers that do come all the way from Ghana as well. All right, to patronize you. To as patronize well. us there. Wow. So do you supply? Let's say someone like must they come here to get it or do you have to, can you take it to them? No, we will build the bus to them. You will be? Yes. Okay, you have, um, what, what are they called? People that? No, yeah, we have delivery personnel. We just that will, that will take the boats to the park and then they will send it to them, wherever okay. they are. And it will be safe? It will be safe. It will not die? No, they don't die. <laughs> All right. We package them in apple cartons and then we make holes there as well for okay. ventilation. Oh wow. Thank you very much for having us at your farm. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share this video and leave a nice comment. So I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Love you guys.